Hi everyone. I wanted to take a moment to kind of um, talk a little bit about what you'd be thinking about, how you should be approaching this, kind of give you an understanding of some of the work that you should be doing. Uh, again, I'm trying to find different ways of kind of recording this information and giving you at least something to, gi to kind of give you a foundation to work from as you're thinking about this. So bear with me as I add these things to the class over time. So right now I have for you uh, early Marx theory and so Karl Marx, uh, early sociological theory, specifically Karl Marx. Um, then I have Durkheim F. Weber. And the reason why I have these as kind of the classical theorists in this set is because they are the classical theorists in this set. This is the main kind of foundation that um, modern sociology is built on. Uh, when we look at Karl Marx, I have here his reading, and basically I'm asking you to read um, from Capital Volume 1, the section on uh, Chapter 1, Chapter 4, and Chapter 6. The first one is on commodities, and basically what it does is that it provides you an explanation of what this idea of commodities is. Remember that when we're talking about capital, we're talking about a system that... Um, engages in how to value exchange, right? The things that we exchange for one thing or the other, right? The commodities are those things that the, in the society we are valuing in this exchange. So we talk about use value and value, and there's a significant amount of things here that is important to kind of understand. The takeaway is, you know, not to really know Karl Marx's work in depthly is to walk away with an understanding of what these things mean to the way in which we look at the world. So when I say, all right, we've got, I'm sorry, when we say we've got uh, commodities and we're talking about commodities, when we look at chapter four and we see the general formula, right, the idea of how um, monies and commodities exchange, right, this idea of how capitalism kind of tends to work and his vision of how it tends to work. Again, these are not very long very dense, but they're not very long. Uh, the notion is, again, to kind of get an understanding of what he means by capitalism. I apologize for the going back and forth. I know that this is probably giving you a headache, but I, I don't want to read this for you either. Uh, chapter 6, the buying and selling of labor power. So the most significant part of Marx is this notion of the selling of labor. What does it mean to sell labor? What does it mean that you are, you know, a commodity? Right, it's the first time in he that he sees. It's the first time in history, really, where where you, you don't have like a good to sell. Instead, you just have really your arms to sell, and that there's a huge segment of society because of the way in which we've industrialized that the only thing that they have as a commodity to put bring into this exchange market, capitalism, is their labor, and so this labor has a particular price value that's added to it. And, and it's interesting because for him, if you think about the notion of like, you know, the motivating forces behind capitalism is profit. Well, where does that profit come from? Well, the only one thing that becomes extremely flexible in this system, as far as determining its value is labor. So capital, right? Profit specifically is an extraction of labor. Right? You have to pay labor less in order to make that into profit. And so, and this is very unique in the system uh, historically. And this is what this is trying to kind of explain to us. So that's Marx. Right? With Durkheim, uh, I put specific readings. Some of these are a little bit longer. Some of these are shorter. Um, the idea behind the Durkheim readings is to hopefully give you a kind of like good understanding of like, who this person is. And and for sociology, Durkheim is extremely important because he provides a very interesting way of looking at the world, very different from Marx, where Marx saw a conflict and saw the extrapolation of profit from labor. Uh, Durkheim saw society as um, coming together in order to try and, you know, solve problems within society. You remember the uh, 101. Uh, a discussion of theory, that's basically what it was kind of telling you. Um, probably the best ones to focus on if you 
get overwhelmed by the big reading that you have there is um, the readings um, that have the RS in front of them. These provide you with a clear overview of who Durkheim is and what his theory was, right? So for example, right, for Durkheim, right, labor is very different than this notion that you're just extracting. Now there is obviously extraction from labor, but he talks about it as a way of which the idea is that society needs people to fulfill certain roles and as part of this process this is what fills up these occupations. Um, here you have, you know, Durkheim and social facts, right? These are good ways of kind of understanding Durkheim's without being overwhelmed by it. If Durkheim's is something that you really are starting to really understand and get into, then probably the reading in Suicide will give you a good understanding as to how to think about uh, the significance of Durkheim's uh, approach. Um, I don't expect you to read this entirety. This is, you know, it's a lot of reading, I know. Um, but, you know, it could give you a good understanding of this functionalist perspective if you want to delve into it much deeper. And then my first question, of course, is, uh, discussion question, is to compare the two. Because they are unique in their perspective. So the idea is for you to start thinking about the mechanisms that they use to describe the way society works and to begin the process of um, thinking about how these two different approaches try to explain similar phenomena, right? So this is what this is supposed to do. Um, in a paper that I'm going to open up in a few weeks, that I want you to write for this class, right? There's two papers you write for this class. Uh, I'm kind of going to be asking you to, you know, think about this a little bit more deeply and to provide more examples. So this is this is kind of the start of a paper that's kind of coming. So if it seems like a very broad question, if it seems like a very, like, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to it, It's in, kind of intended to be that way. Your job now is to begin to formulate these distinctions and to try to think about, based on what you've read, how these two things are different ways of looking at the world. Uh, Weber is another sociologist, and one of the things that Weber does is that, in a way, he tries to bring these two, two ideas together. Weber is a person who, both functionalist, historically, um, conflict theorist, and those who focus on things from a micro-sociological perspective, um, we call them micro theorist or uh, symbolic interactionist. If you remember from your intro to sociology class, there was a lot of discussion of symbolic interaction. Um, all of these different sociologists uh, have a claim on Weber, and that's because Weber tried to touch on all three in the way that you kind of, um, um, in the physical sciences, particularly in physics, you see this kind of push for a theory that explains everything. They call it toe, so theory of everything. Uh, it, that's kind of almost what Weber was doing, but he did it in such distinct ways that there is no clear linkage. It's basically people taking different parts of different arguments that he made at different points in time and using that to kind of illustrate their ideas. So Weber is extremely important. There's a lot of great ideas that Weber kind of explains, particularly this notion of rationalism that kind of exists within um, the marketplace and these arguments about rationalism. And he provides a kind of better understanding of how we should be thinking about uh, rationalism. And so he does it through several ways, right? He has a discussion about uh, bureaucracy and the bureaucracy of rationalism. Like bu bu bureaucracies are extremely rational things. Um, however, at the same time, in their rationalism, they create a social order that can become extremely frustrating and difficult to operate in and create a sense of, um, um, at some point, um, we, we become so specialized in the things that we do that we almost become disconnected from the natural world completely it's, it's it's got these 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 ideas that come from marx but he also sees these as ex efficient systems 
that have to come into existence in order for society to operate. So it becomes, again, almost like that structuralist model that he's bringing in this notion of how, well, this is how society needs in order to deal with these things. And so you have here a significant number of this kind of discussion. Um, right, he's, this is another reading. This one talks about stocks and commodity exchange, right? The idea of how exchange happens, which again, if you compare to Marx, you can see these two ideas playing themselves out. The interpretive um, sociology is where you see the um, symbolic interactions and micro sociologists kind of tapping on, and he did this on his work on religion and talking about class and the significance of class, and you can get a good idea of um, some of these principles that guide social behavior, how Weber um, has kind of developed these ideas using a little bit of Marx and a little bit of, of Durkheim and a little bit of a lot of his own thinking as he, he was a political economist. So you could see a lot of these things going on there. Now you notice there's no discussion on Weber that I've added here and that's because I, I, I really want to make sure that you guys take these like one step at a time and don't become too overwhelmed. Let me show you what the next one is going to be and I'll open this one right now. This one is going to be on Du Bois and this one is um, a discussion on Du Bois. So um, in this particular case I believe what I have for you is a uh, general reading on Soul of Black Folks and I think if you and again there's a lot of readings that take place here apologize um, it's a theory class we just need to make sure that we cover this um, W.B. Du Bois and I'll probably spend a little bit more of a lecture talking about this notion of double consciousness uh, W.B. Du Bois is probably the um, first true American sociologist now we have other American sociologists obviously around this time period but he applied a very modern way of, of, of doing sociological work so that makes him unique in history. It isn't just that he is a sociologist and because he's a black sociologist back when there were no black sociologists. Um, it isn't just that. It really comes down to that a lot of the sociology that he did is very much the sociology that American sociologists do today. So um, this is a very important reading simply because it provides us with an understanding of, of, of the social structures through an American lens, right? The other social structures are looking at things um, in a very generic way, uh, which is great, it's fine. Uh, Durkheim, Marx, Weber all have this kind of, you know, looking at the world and looking at society as this big, huge thing. Du Bois was looking at it, right, as, as, as it affected American social structure, right? Particularly when you think about race and the significance of race within the American um, character, it, it, it's, it's extremely important because it really truly affects how we exchange and engage with each other. It is part of a system that should not be ignored, and yet you find that the other perspectives tended not to incorporate this in, mostly because they didn't have to. But because Du Bois was an American and because this was, and he was African American, this was significant to him. So, these are the readings and these are the things that I want you to kind of play around with in your head. Um, I'm not opening up this paper as of yet and I'm probably going to make this a little bit easier. But remember, you've, we've got plenty of time to do this. And the idea is that you spend at least a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks on each one of these subjects. So Karl Marx, two weeks, Durkheim, a couple of weeks, Weber, a couple of weeks. I've opened them up early because I want you guys to get started early. I want you guys to really start thinking about these ideas. I'll try to add some extra stuff in here to give you um, some more background stuff. I think that what I'll do is that I'll open up subfolders or new folders and put things like this video and other videos in there to help you process this a little bit and I, I apologize bear with me uh, this has now become a project um, in construction 
So I'm trying to get as much information in there for you in order to that you don't become overwhelmed. I'm trying to make sure that you do the readings, which are kind of overwhelming, but still necessary. Uh, at the same time, these videos should provide should be shorter. Um, this one is a little bit longer because it's the first time and I'm trying to catch everything up, but these should be shorter. They should be to the point. And if possible, what I'll do is that I will find other videos that you can click on that will give you the same information, maybe in a slightly different way, uh, maybe in a much more entertaining way. So bear with me as I populate information into this class and hopefully um, you can walk away with something significant. Thank you again.